Pastor Williams show up, <laughs> we have seats for them, too. <laughs> Actually, I want to introduce our first guest tonight is the world-famous musical artist. He is the man who composed, not composed, but he scored the background music for Lost Weekend and Spellbound, Dr. Samuel Hoffman. Dr. Hoffman. Doctor, I was under the impression you were going to bring your musical instrument with you tonight. Well, this is it. <laughs> this is a musical instrument? Sure. Well, will you want to tuck it under your chin and play something for us? Johnny, it's not that kind of an instrument. Oh, it's not. See, it's, this is a theremin's electronic instrument. Uh -huh. You produce music or sound by waving your hand into an electrical field. Sounds like Margaret Truman in a cold shower, doesn't it? <laughs> Gee, that's wonderful. Guys, you just, uh, we're just waiting here. Mm -hmm. I think taking lessons from the Doctor, what, where was the last thing you, where was the last time you played this? Well, I just completed the score of the picture The Day the World Ended. You know, that's a very appropriate song for The Day the World Ends. I mean... And that day, who's going to be particular? Uh, this is, is there something else can we play? Uh, well, sure, we can play a song with this very oh, easily. Well, well, lay, a, lay a few bars on us, we Glad to. Okay, I'm not sure how Dr. Samuel Hoffman is being associated with this. He's supposed to be a podiatrist, but according to the Johnny Carson show, he scored the music for Spellbound, and also the day the earth stood still. Now the broadcast you're watching is in 1956. So in 1956, Americans will get a taste of the so-called musical instrument called the theremin. The theremin was invented approximately 1918, 1919, in the Soviet Union or Russia shortly after the Russian Revolution. It was sponsored by the Soviet government or the Russian government seeking what they were called uh, censors. Uh, they were called uh, sensitivity censors or something like that. But anyhow it was sponsored by the Russians. Later, Mr. Theremin will come to the United States. He will patent this instrument approximately 1928 or 1929. Now, I'm going to play some more so you can hear the music, but I do have more to say about it, and I'm going to relate this to some of my other videos. So let's join the program again, 1956, early television, The Johnny Carson Show. Okay, now the theremin is played uh, completely by not touching it. So the vertical antenna is the pitch, or the frequency, or the vibration. Now, the, uh, the parallel uh, uh, antenna, the one that he has his hand on right now, is the volume. So the vertical is the pitch, and the horizontal is the volume. Now, the antennas are never touched. 
because there is an electronic frequency field generated around the instrument. The human body interacts with the frequency of the instrument. It interacts with the electronic field, the human body. Now, what I'm getting at is this. In almost every town, you will find flagpoles. In almost every town, you will find water towers. Could it be that the flagpoles and the water towers are creating these frequency fields all around us and we've been completely oblivious to it. Now you just saw that the human body can interact with an electronic frequency field. In this particular case, the human being becomes the one who plays the electronic field and becomes master over it. But what if the electronic field is master over the human being? I'll tell you a little more about what I mean, but we'll watch a little more of the Johnny Carson show. Yes, that's pretty amazing, Doctor. Can I, can I try this? Sure, would you like to try something? Only don't put your hand up to the antennae. This is the antenna. Yeah, move it. To and from. See? What do I do when I finish? Just well, keep warm thing. or do I pop up? Well, listen, oh. let's try it. Captain Apeggio, please. Sherry North, old film. <laughs> So what did I mean? What I mean is this. If flagpoles are actually antennas, vertical antennas like that, and let's say water towers are the ones creating the magnetic electronic fields, your body interacts with the electronic field and you don't know it. You might say, so what? Well, I'm going to tell you something. Your skull is like a speaker. Your skull can receive the impulses and it's like a speaker in a television set or a radio. Now, those electronic impulses then go from your skull into your brain. And your brain then does something with them. What if those electronic impulses have been actually controlling some of your moods and some of your thoughts? Oh, you say you're into science fiction. No, I'm not. It looks to me like the Soviets or the Russians were on to this approximately 1918. And populations could have been 
completely unaware of the fact that they have been under mind control. Let's watch a little more of this and I'll finish up. Let me uh, work with a vocalist. Uh, Jack France, would you come in? Yeah. Our vocalist, Jack. Shake hands with, uh, with Dr. Hoffman. Hi, Doc. Jack, how are you doing? Glad to know you. <laughs> By the way, I'm not really sure, but I think that's Babe Ruth, the baseball player. I'm not really sure, but anyhow, it wouldn't surprise me. I'll do some research on it. It sounds like hell of trouble in a cold shower. <laughs> I just said that about Margaret Truman. Well, Helen Trouble takes cold showers, too. Not as cold as Margaret, well, it makes no difference anyway. How about the doctor to Duffy on the number? Well, I'm not sure my number's arranged for uh, radar. Well, try it. Anyway. Well, so what would you like to do, Jack? You know, 16 tons? What key? E flat. Good, let's kick let's off. Let's go. You know, 16 tons. What do you get? Another day. What uh, what do you play this thing on, Doctor? 110 volts. Well, that's the trouble. Take a look at Jack. He needs at oh, least a thousand. Yes. <laughs> this thing will never be a success if you can get bubbles out of it anyway. Look, I tell you what, why don't we go find the 110 volt girl? All right, huh? let's do that. Uh, AC or DC? Oh, what Make about it. my song? Yeah, how about don't sit? Okay, so my suggestion is this. Like the theremin, radio frequencies have always been in the air. And those radio frequencies are encountering your body. Or to put it another way, your body has been encountering those radio frequencies. Those radio frequencies have gone into your skull and hence vibrations occur and then the vibrations go into your ears and then into your brain or your thoughts. Far-fetched? No. Psychotronic weapons. Anthony Sutton revealed this to us, but nobody was paying attention to it. And Anthony Sutton nailed the Russians for developing it. And it looks like it started with what is called the theremin. Now, uh, in Russian, the name is Terman or something, T-E-R-M-A-N, the inventor. But somehow it got twisted a little bit, and we know it as Theremin, T-H-E-R-I-M-I-N. The Theremin seems to demonstrate to me that Theremins have been in every city and every town but you didn't know it, and I didn't know it. They have been used for mind control, broadcasting certain frequencies out into the population to produce certain moods and certain thoughts. Now another related topic to this is, what's the frequency, Kenneth? I've done some videos on that, and they might be on uh, Plato's Cave Revisited, but that was an incident whereby uh, the television news reporter, supposedly Dan Rather, was mugged, and the uh, man kept saying, what's the frequency, Kenneth? What's the frequency, Kenneth? trying to ascertain it from uh, Dan Rather. Now, maybe the whole thing was a hoax about him being mugged, but, but, the controllers may have just been trying to tell the population that you've been under mind control by the use of frequencies. <laughs> All right, well, the best mind control is the holy word of God. If you let the word of God dwell in your mind, mind control 
will not be effective on you. Put on the helmet of salvation, take every thought captive to Christ, and let your mind dwell on these things or the good things, as it says in Philippians chapter 3. And if your mind is filled with the Word, and every thought is captive to Christ, no mind control efforts of man, or of the devil, or of the demons, is going to capture your thoughts. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. And this concludes my message. Thank you.